this is Sharice Monet and welcome to the second installment of A Word on Books. I want to first start by thanking everybody for their feedback and their questions. Uh, feedback really helps me to be a better me, so I appreciate it if you leave it either on this site or my Facebook page. Good, bad, or indifferent, if it's how you really feel, it can only help me to grow, so I appreciate it. So one of the things that I was told is to maybe get a tripod, which I did, to make sure that I can look at you and make a more personal connection. The other thing I was asked to do was to give some type of format because you know what? Everybody's not going to be interested in everything I have to say unless it pertains to something that they're interested in. So let's say, so let me start by a format today. Um, I did make some notes so that I could keep up. So if you see me glance down, it's not me having a script is to make sure that I don't forget to tell you something I plan to. First thing I'm going to tell you about is where I get my audiobooks from today. I'm going to give you two of my sources and some information as to how to access those. Um, I'm going to tell you the type of audiobooks I listen to. Not so much subject, but specifically the type abridged versus unabridged, and I'll explain. Then I'm going to give you no more than three of the books that I'm listening to and give you some feedback on those or tell you how I feel about those at this point. And then the last thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to give you a throwback. And a throwback is basically a book that I've listened to that I enjoy um, for whatever reason. I don't know. It could have been the time, the place, or whatever I was into. But I'm going to share what I enjoyed. So maybe you'll enjoy it also. Um, there's an app called Overdrive. And Overdrive actually has a new name now also called Libby, L-I-B-B-Y. But I am still able to use the Overdrive, O-V-E-R-D-R-I-V-E -E -E app. These apps are free and they are encouraged. The first thing you have to do is to have a library card. Now what's cool about this is if you live in one city and you work in another city, you can have two library cards for both city. For me, this works great. I live in Canton. I worked in Ipsy. If Solani's library had things that Canton's library would never, ever, ever, ever even think to consider to cover. Um, there is a series called The Cartel, which is probably one of the only um, smut type, if you will, uh, series that I listen to. Um, or hood series, or however you want to call it, but it, it, it got me. I, I was caught up in the cartel. However, Kent wasn't having it. I'm not finding the cartel in the Kent Library, but I was able to find the cartel in the Ypsilanti Library, which allowed me to be able to get these books at no cost. The cool thing about getting books from the library is simply that it's no cost to you. It, it Library is covered through a very, various ways of taxes and bills and proposals and all of the other wonderful ways that the government manages to get money to support things, so I suggest that you use it. Um, all you do with the Overdrive, the Overdrive or Libby account is you have your library card, you download the app, it has you link your library card to it, and it has you do a drop down menu, you pick out your library, and you're in. And this works for not just Audible books, but this is the written word as well. So if you have Kindles or you read on your tablets or your iPad or any of those things, it'll work for you just fine. So for those of you like Rara who walks around with books all of the time, this idea will work for you just as well. Um, the other thing is Audible. Audible is through Amazon. And as with anything, Amazon says, come on, give me a try. And so you try Amazon for 30 days, they give you a free book. But after that, your account is charged $14.95 a month. Now, I, I'm torn on Audible. I got involved in Audible because my daughter on my Amazon account started getting books that she needed for school because she doesn't like to read, but she will listen to books. And so that's how, and a lot of her textbooks are actually books that are Audible. So that's how I got involved in it. The cool thing about it is, is that if you belong to Audible, $14.95 for a book. A lot of the books that I own in my um, audio library originally were $30, $40, and $50 for the book. So I say that to say $14.95 is not a lot if you want to build a digital library. The other thing is, is the way it works is that you have $14.95 and you get credits. When you go in and redeem your credits through Audible, 
you redeem your credits if you want to buy something additional outside of your credits as a member of audible.com they also will give you 30 percent off on any additional books so if you're somebody that wants to build your books um, in a digital collection that's the way to go audible.com and again you can find it through amazon as with always audible just like overdrive is a free app they encourage you to use it uh, i also wanted to address the type of books that i listen to i listen to unabridged what does that mean unabridged means word for word whatever the author wrote in the long handwritten manuscript type whatever book an abridged version is where someone is coming in and decided that this is not important and they cut it out to make the book shorter that doesn't work for me i want to know everything i want to know every single solitary thing if you want to take 20 minutes to describe to me the color of somebody's suit and how they looked and if their hair was on fleek or whatever the case may be this is something that i need to know i need to get a visual and that's the only way i can do it so i would encourage you to start with abridged if you find a bridge gives you just too much information try the unabridged versions but for me a bridge uh, abridged versions um it's just too much i i want to know everything i mean that's just me i need a nice closure and i don't need anybody picking what i need to see um so i want to talk about the books that i'm listening to or that i've listened to this week again i will never burden you with more than three books a week because that would just be too much I am listening to right, or I just finished listening to, I should say, Why is for Yesterday by Sue Grafton. Um, Sue Grafton has wrote, I call it the alphabet series. So if she just hit Y, we're going to hit the end, and I don't know what we're going to do. I find that Sue Grafton's books um, hit a patch where they weren't great. I didn't, I didn't think the last one was great. But this one that I just finished, Why As For Yesterday, I think she did a really good job. And maybe because she's coming up on the end and she's taking more time, she doesn't rush to put out books. You're waiting for her books for a while. This particular book was like six and a half hours long. And um, it came out 8-22-17, so it was a relatively new book, which is another thing. If there's an audio book that you want from the library and you know it's coming out, you simply just put it on hold and when the book becomes available they automatically load it into your account so I knew this book was coming out months ago as soon as my library realized it was getting I put it on hold and I'm the next one if you do that when you finish a book like that that you know you've had to wait two or three months for or whatever the case may be make sure as soon as you finish it you return it early that's that's the nice thing to do because somebody behind you might very well be waiting on that book so don't hold the book just because get the book back out in the circulation so someone else can listen to it um her books are read by judy k or this particular series and there's a private detective named kinsey milholm which is a female detective in the book that's the person the main character in all of her all of her books um this book started out with a videotape of some teens doing some things they had no business doing later on the videotape showed up and it was a question about give me some money or I'm going to show this to somebody else and then throw in there a couple of murders and then you want to talk about oh yeah there's a psychopath that's after Kenzie there's a homeless lady from a couple of books back that showed up oh by the way there's a pregnancy who's who the baby daddy all of that so with um Sue Grafton's books there's a lot going on but by the end, she's put a nice big bow on it and it all works out. This was one of her better books. Um, as I said, most recently, eh, the other ones were okay, the last couple. But this one was a pre pretty decent book. So I will give this four glasses out of five. Good job, Sue Grafton. Um, the next one I listened to was The Store by James Patterson and Richard Delalo. Forgive me if I'm saying that wrong. Uh, one of the things that I found that was interesting is a friend of mine, Marvelisa, said to me once, she said, James Patterson is smart because he will write a book or co-write a book with six or seven other different people. And he does. And that's why James Patterson seems like he has a book out every other week. I mean, the man is constantly writing. That's his bread and butter. Um, this particular book, The Store, was read by Graham 
Halstead, about five hours. That's the other thing. I'm finding that some of Patterson books are shorter. He even has something called book shots that are no less than um, three sections. I don't call them chapters because they're not broke up into chapters, but three sections that are less than like three hours. But um, this was an interesting book. I actually really like the book. The book was called The Store and it was basically I and a dedicated Amazon shopper could not help think about anything other than Amazon um, on steroids when I was reading this book or listening I'm sorry this book was about a author I mean yes an author who decided to infiltrate this big internet store and he was going to write this tell-all book about the internet store only to find out that working for this company exposed his entire life. There were drones following him wherever he went. There were cameras in his house. He moved into his new house only to find out that all the food that his family normally bought was already there. So I enjoyed this book because on some level I could see it happening on some level, not as deep as it gets in the book. But this one actually to me was a really good book. I enjoyed it. Um, five hours that's painting the bathroom you know what I'm saying is five hours is not a long time if you're up and you're moving around five hours so for this one I would say it got a little far-fetched at some points but I'll give it four and a half glasses there you go I am going to look up the second author Richard Delalo and see what he does as an independent author because I'd like to see what type of works he does. James Patterson's name simply sells books. It just is what it is. Um, the last book which I'm currently listening to and I know that I'll finish just because I'm a Lisa Scottolini fan and she had a book that came out 8 15 17 a day after by the way um, the store came out which was 8 14 17 it's read by Kate Burson this is a long book. This book is a little over nine hours. However, it's part of a series, uh, Rosaro and Denunzio. It is a legal series. Um, the main character, Mary Denunzio, she is all about family and she's all about the people in her neighborhood and that she grew up with. And she's this lawyer with a super soft heart. And it gets her involved in things sometimes that are that's a direct conflict with her job as a partner in a law firm. So where I am right now, and I'll close it out when I get through it, I can't really rate it at this moment, but Lisa Scottolini writes really good books. She's one of my favorite. Um, the reason I hit three books this week is because I had three books that I thought were awesome um, by three writers that I thought was awesome. So I thought I'd share them all. Last but not least, I'm gonna do my throwback. And my throwback is a big throwback from 32310. And in fact, when I first got this book or when I first um, came in contact with this book, I actually had it on cassette, which I still have it. And I have a cassette player every time I want to go back and li listen to some of mine that are on cassette. It's called uh, Dirty White Boys by Stephen Hunter. And it's read by Eric Dove. Man, this is a deep book. This is a book about um, some guys in prison. It involves some guys in prison. One of them having a pen pal and some stuff goes down in the prison that caused them to have to escape because something went down in the prison. And so where do they escape to? The pen pal. You got to be careful about that. Them jailhouse letters, they might get you in trouble. And so the Again, watch Stephen King's another one. That's not just the story. There's some side stories and backstories going on. There's some affairs going on. There's some secrecy going on. There's some phone calls that shouldn't be happening between people going on. Um, it, it was, to me, a really good book. So shout out to Stephen Hunter um, on Dirty White Boys. It is a book that I would highly recommend. It definitely is a five last book. It is. It truly is. 
And I would encourage you, given the opportunity, to check it out. Um, I found it on Audible. It's one that I own in my personal library. And again, I believe I own it on cassette. But I found it in Audible. So if you decide to join Audible, it's one I would recommend you listen to. I thank you for your time today. I know it was a longer one. We covered more stuff. If you were able to stay through the end of it, great. If you came back, great. The big thing is, is that I like these to feel like I'm talking to you. So for me to have a 16 minute conversation with you and give you some great information means all the world, all the um, good in the world to me. So thank you so much for this installment. I will repost it on YouTube. Please feel free to comment. Give me feedback. Ask me questions. Thank you so much. And it was wonderful. And I look forward to seeing you all next week. Cheers.